Hey chess friends, National Master James Cantor III here with chess.com and today we have game of the day. Now before we get started here, we actually have to say it's been very wild at the FIDE World Cup 2021, but not only just with the chess. In fact, with the round today, Kirawana's opponent actually uh, forfeited after 15 moves due to the uh, COVID test coming back positive. And Aronian actually was out with a fever and had to forfeit his round today. He didn't actually play. So with that being said, stay safe out there, guys. Now, with the game of the day today, we have uh, Bascarin Adiban versus uh, Nuris, Nuris Delgado Ramirez. So let's get into it, guys. This is actually the game of the day here. We have a D4 on the board and Knight F6. So standard stuff, of course, as you know, C4, E6, really nothing else to see here, honestly. Very easy stuff to play. You see this all the time. And then after the E6 move, there's Knight to C3, maybe saying Nimzo India, maybe something else. And Bishop to B4, that's exactly what we get here. A Nimzo Indian, very classical stuff. It is nice to play, very flexible, hyper-modern stuff. Hey, something you see every day, thousands of games every single day with the Nimzo Indian. Every opening's the same in many aspects, and development is one of them. So Bishop being four, Bishop before four is a very strong move, and something that the black players playing from the black side here actually really like to see is actually love going into the Nimzo Indians. So let's see what we have here. And f3 a samish variation which is actually more positional but could be actually very aggressive and tactical in the right hands and with the right type of play f3 the idea here is to play e4 and have just a huge center in some type of king's indian fashion but in fact there's no finchetto of the bishop to g7 so after f3 there's the d5 option saying okay cool we're going to attack the center there's many cases and many ways you can play here you could even go e5 um, instead, but after d5 takes e5, there's c5 here. There's so many ways you can play with the black pieces against the same as variation. And a3 was the way that uh, Adiban chose here after the d5 move. a3 saying, hey, give me the bishop, please. I'll take that. And after bishop takes c3, b takes c3. The idea here is really kind of bullying this pawn. Or after capturing, there's a hole on c4. So you may see things from black like b6, bishop to a6. Knight to c6 and knight a5 with the queen going to the light square sometimes even via this route going to c6 hitting c4 as well. White's idea, of course, as we're going to see here is e e4 if we can, playing bishop to d3, moving the knight to e2, sometimes h3 and g5, and actually trying to develop an attack on the king side of the board. Let's see if it's able to happen. c6 here from Delgado and after c6, e4 from Adiban, very strong move. In fact, just gambiting a pawn in a way. Let's see what happens after pawn takes. Pawn takes, and you have to ask yourself, knight takes e4, what happens? Now, he actually played e5 from Ramirez here. After e5, there was knight f3. But after knight takes c4, you have to ask yourself, yo, why is he giving up this pawn? Well, number one, look at the development. It's not there. No development. So after this, we can play a move like queen to g4 for the score here. Very nice move, hitting the knights and hitting g7 at the same time. Now, this is an equal position, in fact. Because development is lacking on both sides. I mean, this is like super crazy. But then, you know, we can move the queen out here. And honestly, the engine says that this is equal here. But it's a dynamic game. And we have a real game. Open G file. Does the king actually go this way? I mean, you kind of have to, right? But this side of the board is weak. We also have bishop G5. Like, how do you move the queen correctly without running into BG, bishop G5? Queen's putting pressure here. There is a lot to do. A lot to do. So going back here, knight of six, did, or in fact, knight takes E4 did not happen. In fact, it was E5. I'm playing very nicely here. This is great. If pawn takes c5, look at the sets of double pawns. This is absolutely gross. Queen, queen takes d1, and you're done. Like king takes, knight takes e4 for the score. Everything hanging, everything must go. Sale. It's a wrap here. Like, this is terrible. Don't ever play in this fashion. So don't take on e5. e5 is not a move. So knight 2f3 from Adiban here defending and also defending everything here. Now, again, what about knight takes e4 now? Let's see if it happens. It does not. He plays queen a5 and says, I'm not going for any of the tricks. But knight takes e4 absolutely was a move here. In fact, the best move from the engine here is queen c2. We're not sure if that was actually his intention. Maybe it was bishop d3, which is another option. But queen knight takes e4 is indeed a pawn sacrifice temporary. As if bishop d3 is a move here, queen c2 is a little better because we're attacking the knight and attacking e5 at the same time. So now we can take with the pawn. And it's strange because like if we take with the knight, there's a queen h4 check. G3 is there. What is this? When, when did the Nimzo Indian get this like wild? So after the queen, after a knight of three, it was queen to a five attacking the c3 pawn. Now, of course, we should defend this pawn. You know, queen takes is annoying, hitting a1 at the same time. So he just defends it and develops at the same time, allowing, again, knight takes e4. So 
uh, Ramirez actually takes it this time and says, look, hey, I'm tired of this pawn being here. I'm going to take it. You're going to have to show me. In fact, engines say zeros. But humans, zero what? Where's the zeros at? This doesn't look like equal at all. In fact, after bishop to d3 here, knight takes c3 is not a move. That's a blunder blocking with your face there. This is a family channel. Look at this. We're going right into the pen for the win. Queen c2. Okay, pawn takes though. Right now we're putting a pressure. He's like, all right, cool. Now I can just actually castle here. Knight takes uh, d4. Actually doesn't work due to queen e5 check. Weirdly enough, 92 takes. E yikes. Start a new one already. Crazy how this game is nuts. In fact, right here, you actually just castled. Now, where are you putting your king, though? Whoa, there's so much going on. I'm even probably threatening to take now. Too much compensation for the sacrifice material. So knight takes d2 from Ramirez here. We take with the queen to keep everything nice and defended. E takes d4 and then castles and castles. But going back, after pawn takes, instead of taking with the knight, he said, I'm out of the way. And have a nice day. What if, what if you take this pawn here? Now, first off, development. Look, every every single opening you play has to have a very, very high level of development. Or else you're going to get crushed and squashed eventually if your opponent does the opposite of you, not developing, and develops all of their pieces. In this sense, look at white. Everything's developed. I mean, Rook's coming to the center. Now, of course, again, strangely enough, engine's like equal like nothing's going on but as a human here absolutely there's everything going on in fact where does he put his king and after you know queen takes c3 let's actually take a look at it now some of you would take this pawn so let's see what happens queen takes c3 runs into some big boy chess here queen e2 and what do you do we step out of the way so there's no checks obviously or no trading we have bishop e6 and moving the king like why, why would we want to move the king so maybe bishop e6 but immediately runs into knight g5 highlighting the fact that you have nothing developed you can castle right into mate if you like. We can just make this a lot easier. Or, you know, you can just not play queen take c3 as well. Because this is very, very bad. This is all the way over, in fact. Now, after castles, um, Ramirez just says, I'm going to get out of the way. But this looks extremely scary. And in fact, the engine says, oh, it's like close to plus one. Like it's not still, you know, this seems like plus seven, right? It, it would seem like that. But looks are very deceiving in chess here. So now, of course, it's up to you. It's white to move here. Now, you have, you were playing in Adiban's shoes. How do you proceed here? It is white to move. What would you do in this position? Here it is, guys. In fact, the move from Adiban here was knight to g5, and we live hitting f7. I mean, h7 hanging, right? And you still are like three tempi behind when it comes to development, my guy. So after knight to g5, there's f5 and in fact this was this right here wasn't the greatest but it's kind of hard to find moves in fact let's take a look, let's take a look at a few if g6 here well g6 in fact i don't think he just didn't he didn't like knight takes f7 which i'm assuming that's why he didn't go for this but <laughs> weirdly enough this is playable of course as a human just going for this is ridiculous you have to calculate insane uh, amounts of, of, of variations and accurately this is the line king takes rook f1 thinking he's done but literally the best move is king e7. Bishop f5 literally loses. That's crazy. But king e7 and then queen f4. And it's just, this is a draw, apparently. But it looks like he's getting mated in here. As a human, you feel like here is black. You have failed. And you're going to get mated. But the engine says, no, you're fine. If you follow the rest of the line all the way through accurately, right? This is very scary. So he didn't want this to happen. He didn't go for the g6 option. This is a real threat. So what about h6 then? Let's see h6. Well, same thing. He was just not wanting him to sack on this at all. Okay, let's see if it's a little bit different. Rook takes, takes, king takes, and then queen f4, rook f1. Looking good again, rook f1, queen f4, probably the same thing. Bishop's involved. Development is not there. Not a move. So, okay, cool. We understand the f5 move. Makes sense here. Blocking everything. And now after f5 here, white's a move. How do you finish this? Adiban is about to go crazy here. You need more pieces for this attack. And if you let black develop, He's just going to be good. And he's going to be like, yeah, your position looks crazy now, says black. So it's white to move. What do you do? Here it is, guys. Well, he played this move right here. C5. And we live. What a move. Put the bishop on C4 for the score and shut the door. Everything about to go crazy here. We're also activating. In fact, if queen takes C5, he's like, ha, gotcha. I got you. And then you like, ha, no, I got you. Queen A2 check. Flex real hard. Wow. If queen d5, not live, gg, start a new one. And if king here, obviously, we just got knight f7 check. So it's pretty easy. Pretty easy stuff. And in fact, in fact, guys, 
this is the best line. And the king, queen takes c7. And actually, king h8 was another move as well. King h8 was a move, um, in fact. Uh, and that's actually what he played. But queen takes c5 could have been played as well. After queen takes, there's a check. King here, knight f7. This is one of the lines that the engine was recommending. And then after the check here, then you have to... Like, this is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. Like, why is this even recommended? Like, this is not fun. But king h8. King h8 from Ramirez, he got out of the way. And was like, all right, I can't do this anymore. I'm not going to let you check me at all, but I am setting up to take this pawn. So queen e2 from Adiban, replacing and redirecting the queen over to the, the king side of the board for mate. Sometimes even knight f7 due to queen e8, but I mean, he could just sidestep you. But queen e2, great move. Knight to d7, I have to develop my pieces, says Ramirez. But in fact, it was 100% face blockage here. Knight d7 is not a move. Now, let's see what the move is, and then we'll... Uh, we'll, we'll continue here. In fact, the move now is queen takes c5. Queen takes c5, and this is kind of like the same about giving up that exchange. After queen h5 here, hitting h7. I mean, this is miserable to play here. In fact, this takes first with check, so you get at least a pawn for it, right? King h1, and then after h6 is knight f7. Takes, takes, and I mean, come on now. Like, you know, this is playable according to the engine here, but like, right? And I mean, maybe it is. Like, if, if, uh, C2 is not a move, obviously, you're getting made it. But if if Black's able to maybe stop or trade the queen somehow, you know, we do have a lot of pawns. It feels like we have a lot more pawns here. Maybe we have some space. But, I mean, white as a human here, this is very hard to do. And this did not happen in the game. In fact, the game, what happened after C5, queen e2, knight d7, well, that's on you now. In fact, to answer the question here, white to move, what would you do? You're probably thinking, what, queen h5? I mean... Queen h5, attack the mate, and the knight f6, block with your face. There it is, defending and attacking at the same time. And you're giving the game back now. I'm good, says black. You're out of there. So you actually have to lead with forcing moves. Most times, usually that's the answer in combos, or you think you feel like you have something there. Lead with some forcing moves. See what happens. Like knight takes h7. Oh, my goodness. Big boy move hitting f8, and queen h5 is coming in next. Sheesh. Man, he about to be in some trouble here. So after knight takes h7, d takes c3 is on the board uh, for queen takes c5 check. This is all he had really in a way. In fact, right here, it's already losing. Like right here, knight d7 was already losing. This was the losing move. Now, it was already kind of bad, but and it's hard to make good moves in a bad position. But after knight d7, knight takes h7 is on the board. So he's like, all right, well, it's whatever. Uh, hey, do what you want. You know, that is, I don't know what to do here, of course. And now the rook's also hanging as well, which you could capture. But he chose queen h5. Ooh, sheesh. Watch these next few moves. Queen takes c5 with check. King h1, get out the way. King g8, he's like, all right, cool. Hey, you can have it. You can have it. You can have the rook. Go ahead, take it. And he says, I don't want the rook. I want another piece in the game. Bishop takes f5 with the decisive threats. In fact, bishop e6 being the biggest threat here. And also even knight g5 action, which, of course, after queen d5, stopping the check, obvious. He does go knight to g5, and we live hitting h7. And then after knight f6, after uh, knight f6, guys, okay, it's white to move. It's white to move. What do you do? What do you do? How do you finish this? Is it done? Or, or no? Or no? Like, how do we actually do this? Well, here's the move. In fact, if you chose bishop h7, okay, I guess you're right. It, it works. It works, but it takes a little bit longer. In fact... What's the better move is what Adiban shows here. There's nothing like a good queen sacrifice. Queen h7. Yeah. Yeah. Queen h7. After knight takes, bishop takes h7, king h8, rook f8, and we made. Whoo, man. My goodness. Way to go out with a bang. That was a great game. And that was a great attacking style chess we just saw there from Adiban. That was very, very cool. Hope you guys enjoyed this game today. I'm National Master James Canton III here with Chess.com, and I'll see you guys on the next video.